Look out, footy's back. Welcome to the AFLW Today Show, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, a very tired, doesn't know where he is, slightly delirious and potentially going to lose his voice, Alex Donnelly. He's back from Sydney. I'm also joined by someone who also returned from Sydney over the weekend, Bryony Dawson. Thank you very much, Alex Donnelly. You do look a little bit scraggly, mate. It's it's been a big couple of days. That's a real... Tabby cat, five o'clock shadow you got yeah. going on there, man. There's yeah. many, many colours yeah. of the rainbow in there. So the 6am flight Friday morning into the Swans, obviously winning the men's preliminary final mm-hmm. Friday night. Didn't get home until about 2.30 Saturday. Mm-hmm. Had to go to the races to watch my horse. That didn't go so well. He it ran didn't. badly. Then to the pub to watch the prelim. 7am flight to get back here to do the men's show yesterday and the Brownlow show. Into my anniversary with my lovely partner, who's very nice, very forgiving. We love her. She's the best into Arsenal playing this morning against Manchester City, and I don't want to start talking about that. Wow, you really... Really ru- just... You did a number on yourself. Yeah. What did you get your partner for your anniversary? I got her a nice uh, nice bouquet of flowers. And... No, that's it, because we're going away on a holiday uh, next year, so we're, sa- we're trying to put money towards that. I know. That doesn't matter. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, also joining us on the show today, we have a guest. All the way from Geelong, the co-captain of the Cats, or one of the co-vice captains, it is Becky Webster, fresh off a massive win over the Suns on the weekend. Oh, uh, Webby, can't wait to see her. Do we call it Beckstar, Webster, Webby, what do we go? Well, because her name is already shortened yeah. to Becky, isn't it? Yeah. But can, so I'm, I'm just going to go with Webby. Yeah. Yeah. We can Because you can short from Becky to Bex or, you know. Yeah, yeah. the dub. Yeah, the dub. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, please make sure you subscribe to all this ridiculousness on our YouTube channel. It is AFL Today and around the social media platform. So what is it? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, AFLW Today, AFLW Today, AU on X. Also, wherever you get a good podcast, just search AFL Today. Literally, just go to Google and search AFL Today Show and everything that we do will come up. And where do you go if you want to get bad podcasts? I don't know because this Excellent. isn't a bad podcast. <laughs> But anyway, can you smell it? Because footy is back. Footy's back. Huge, like midweek, so many games going on at the it's moment. It's a lot, isn't it? It's, it's so, a lot. It's like by missing one day of football on Saturday, I had so much to catch up mm-hmm. on. It's mm-hmm. a lot. So, I find myself with like spare time midweek, which doesn't happen often. I'm like, what can I do with myself? I'm like, is there footy on? And you go, yes. Uh. Footy. And the footy's just there. It's and great. And it's excellent. I mean, I love watching it. It's because this rolls straight into the quick look. The time slots aren't great, which isn't helping, you know, uh, fan involvement or fans getting to the game. It's like everyone just watching it on KO or Channel 7, yeah. wherever you get it. Uh, having games in such a short period of time, if you get one injury, you're probably missing three games at the moment, mm-hmm. which isn't great. Um, where else? They're playing, you know, games at five o'clock at Frankston or wherever. The five o'clock at Witten Oval on Friday, that looked fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It, yeah, we're, sp- we're supposed to be hitting like targets and KPIs this year in order to grow uh, grow the game, yep. grow the season, do all of that kind of stuff. And I like, I was, I, I drank the Kool Aid in the beginning and I was like, let's just see. I was like, midweek footy, let's go. Great. Love midweek footy. Don't get me wrong. But we're trying to hit crowd targets here. And I feel like we might have had a, just a tiny little stitch up. Yeah. Might have been taken to the dry cleaners. In fairness, we can't help how up. bad the weather was in Melbourne on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, it was bad, that wasn't it? doesn't help. Yeah. Good on us for getting out of Melbourne for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have an idea. Let's do a gather around in Sydney and just play every game at Henson Park. Great. You really like Henson Park, don't you? There was 6,000 people there yesterday. It looked it's good. awesome. I was good. very jealous that I flew home yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. You couldn't have fit one more thing into your weekend though, mate. So. No, I, I had to come home yesterday morning. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, we had more injuries. We haven't got many updates on a lot of them. We, like, we've literally got none. We've got on your tie. Yeah. She just went down on her own and like down like a mm. sack of potatoes, which screams only one thing, isn't it, Alex Donnelly? I see. Uh, I can't chant that. ACL I? or MCL. Uh, she walked off, which again indicates... <laughs> Uh, an ACL uh, injury. So we're still waiting from the club. We've tried to find out um, what's happening. But, yeah, she came off, didn't take any part, and it looks to be leaning that way. Um, Also, Brooke Smith left the field uh, clutching her collarbone. She copped a knock. Yeah, just a knock. Just in a a standard contest, head over the footy up against Prasparkas. Prasparkas just came through. Whack. That's one of those footy ones. If that happens, I'm like, yeah, that's just footy. 
Yeah, collarbone is footy. Yeah. Yeah. ACL, you're just like, oh, God damn it, not again. I wonder how many- A um, couple of head knocks in the Swans-Giants game too. Oh, was there? No concussions as of yet, but Good. we could have day later ones. Like, mm-hmm. How Montana Ham didn't get one after getting slung to the ground? Hopefully not. Yeah, that was a big one, wasn't it? It wasn't great. Mm. Uh, and then we had Kennedy as well was in a head clash as well. I think Goldsworthy was in there as well. So like, let's hope they're all fine because they all have like their short weeks this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taylor Smith leading the goal kicking. Nine goals in the last three games. First play to 10 this season. Mm-hmm. Flying. Absolutely flying. Well done. And the last part of the quick look is how the hell does Jess Webster still have a voice? Called four games of footy this week <laughs> and was at the MCG Saturday afternoon. She works hard for it, Jess. She's yeah. she's uh, an excellent commentator. I love hearing her uh, on the broadcast. How her so. voice wasn't croaky yesterday after calling the Gold Coast Geelong game and then going to the preliminary final and then calling the early game on Sunday. Because she's a professional. Oh, that's what it is. Mm. My- you should try giving it a go, Alex. You get like one day a month, and I might be someday this week when I'm trying to get tickets to the grand final. Anyway, let's get to the ladder check. It's a bit out of whack because it's week. We're just going to go with weeks now until they start getting towards the back end of the year and all the games make sense. Yep. So the Adelaide Crows are on top of the ladder. They've played four games. They're unbeaten. They look awesome. Two hundred three percent. Brisbane Lions equal on top, but they've played five games. So. They're a game behind Adelaide. Technically They're not. They're a game not. ahead of Adelaide mm. and whatever. They play each other this Sunday. It's going to be sick. Uh, two, 172%. North Melbourne, uh, well, the first half was good. The second half, no one needs to see ever again, yeah. including all the North Melbourne players. If, if, if they called that game off and I went, this is done, like, yeah. you can all go home, I think everyone would be like, sick. Cool. No worries. <laughs> it was hailing sideways. They're on 234% on 14 points. The draw could come in handy. Richmond, all of a sudden, back on track after losing to West Coast. Imagine if they didn't lose to West Coast. They'd be on, near on top of the ladder. 193%, <laughs> 12 points. Hawthorne, huge win on the weekend. 12 points. Fremantle, mm-hmm. 12. St Kilda, 12. West Coast Eagles with 82% still in the eight. West Coast in the eight. Yeah. How good. Th- uh, they're three and two after losing to Brisbane. The Swans are two and two after winning over the Giants. Carlton are two and two after getting beaten. Ja, uh, both GWS and Geelong, one, two, and one with healthy percentages because they've smashed teams when they've won. Port, Melbourne, Essendon, Dogs. Yeah, the Dogs on four points. The Dogs up from last to 16th. Gold Coast Suns, 17th on two points. And Collingwood, last. The poor winless. little pies. They're having a really rough season, aren't they? I'm more concerned about the Suns at the moment. Are you? They were, I Because Collingwood... We've talked about the issues and the myriad of problems that's going on there mm-hmm. with players, injuries, behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Gold Coast. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, before we get into the games that we're going to chat about, the review, and then look ahead to the couple of games we've got on Tuesday night and Wednesday, we're going to have a chat to our new best friend, Becky Webster. All right, AFLW today. How good is this? New best friend of, of the show, fresh off a big win up on the Gold Coast on the weekend. It's Becky Webster. Welcome, Becky. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Woo! Yeah, I've got, got to do my way. Yeah, you've got to do. Yeah, the, I was just letting her say hello first. Got to do the cheer section. So we'll talk. We'll get our like two minutes of serious footy chat out of the way. Yes, and then we'll move on. Yep. Uh, big win over the weekend. Important <laughs> win, but decisive. Take us through that. Fifteen goals and just destroying Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of been, um, you know, you know, when you've been training really hard and you sort of feel like that connection's been there and you're just waiting for it to come out in a game, it sort of felt like that on the weekend. So, yeah, everyone sort of played their roles really well and um, off the back of that was able to hit the scoreboard pretty well. So we'll take that one. And a cheeky 21 possessions for yourself. Becky, you got to be happy with that? <laughs> just trying to get the number on my back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the synergy there, but also – it. Everything did seem to click on the weekend. Obviously, you've had the the week before in the raining and hail sideways game up into the beautiful deck of the Gold Coast. How nice was that just trying out going, oh, this is cool. <laughs> the sun's out. No, I definitely had the sweats going, I reckon. <laughs> Running out um, beforehand, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, it is hot. It's probably not a like, nice problem like to have, though, water. rather <laughs> than playing in, like, the pouring rain and the freezing cold. You'd much rather be... Donning the the sunscreen, the old slip slop slap. Surely, it definitely helps the halfback uh, chain outs. That's for sure. <laughs> Actually, and that's a, a, a question because obviously last week so cold it was hailing, and then you come up to a game on the Gold Coast. It's hot and humid naturally up there. With like hydration and preparation, are there different things that you do leading into a game like that, knowing you're more than likely going to sweat a lot more and it's going to take a lot more toll on the body. 
Yeah, for sure. We definitely um, hydrate a lot more, have our hydrolyte. And I think the travel comes into account as well, whether it's whether it was raining and cold on the Gold Coast, you're still extra hydrated on the plane and, and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, definitely. Now, Becky, you are you really you're chipping away at the leadership at Geelong. You're one of the the original players. You've been in the leadership group, um, I think, since 2019. You're co vice captain now. How are you taking to to leadership? Is it something that you enjoy? Yeah, I love it. I I've sort of always said to the girls in the group, like, I always just want to be my authentic self, and um, I think that sort of helped with my leadership style. I try to relate to as many people as I can and just be just be me and be happy all the time and, you know, just drive the group to um, where I think what we can be and what we can do. So, yeah, just pushing that standard and just try to be yeah, my authentic self. And, um, yeah, it's nice to be recognised in the leadership group for that. This weekend, or this this week, sorry, on Thursday night, massive game up against Hawthorne. They're coming off a ridiculously amazing win themselves too on Saturday. First of all, obviously Hawthorne and Geelong, old rivals as well, and into this. How are you feeling going into that game and uh, just, I suppose, the excitement, primetime footy going into what is one of the biggest weekends across the country as far as footy is concerned? No, super pumped. I feel like it's always fun coming up against Hawthorne and, you know, similar in the men's, there's a little bit of a rivalry there and nothing better than being back at GMHBA too. Um, we've been away for a couple of weeks now. So to play under lights here on the school holidays, it would be great to have a bit of a, a crowd. But, um, no, nah, super exciting. Um, Hawthorne are in really good form at the moment too, so good to challenge ourselves against them. Becky, I've got to ask, because you're, you're Rebecca and then mm. you get Becky – that's already a nickname. What do you have like another nickname around the club? Like, are you like a Webby? Cause I said, get out Webby when you first came on. You're like, you know, I feel like you'd heard that a few times. What are you, what are your nicknames around the club? I'm definitely a Becky, but I get the occasional Webby, but to me, that's my brother. So I kind uh, of, yeah, okay. of side eye that. <laughs> Is it because you got an older brother? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they get the nicknames first. I had it with my brother. Um, so on the field, people are just shouting out Becky when they want the ball from you. Yeah. Oh, my usually. God, I love it. Yeah, Becky. Yeah, I can, do, I can see that. Becky, sure. like, not a Bex. Hmm. Bex, no. Becky. <laughs> love it. Yeah, but what usually if you- Usually I'm shouting at them for the ball. <laughs> 21 disposals. I mean, one, two, one, one, two. All the disposals <laughs> tell us that. So- Obviously, uh, you're a co-host of the Yeah, The Girls podcast alongside a couple of your teammates, uh, Georgie and Claudia. How's getting into that space just aside from footy concern? Like, is it just something that helps? I know it's footy related and such, but is it just good to sort of switch off a little bit? And it's basically just a bit of fun at the end of the day. 100%. It's so fun. I love doing it. And the girls are great. I feel like we bounce off each other really well. Um, and it helps like we're really close friends off um, off the field and um, to be able to sort of bring that on the podcast and share our personalities a bit more um, is so great. And, you know, just getting a couple of guests on and getting um, the other players around it um, sort of just helps the community and just to sort of understand what we do outside of just kicking a footy around. So we obviously talk a lot of talk a lot of footy, but we also talk a lot of fun and hot girl walks and all that sort of stuff. So. <laughs> And, um, can't complain, but that's no, a great it's a great thing to be a part of. How many listeners you got, Becky? I actually haven't looked at the data, but <laughs> I'm getting competitive now. Get a bit more, we'll get a few more across. <laughs> yeah, a bit of cross promotion here. Yeah, a little bit of cross promotion, yeah. if you don't mind. <laughs> Um, so you're studying, uh, I'm going to try and get this right, sports science <laughs> and business sports management at Deakin, correct? Right. And yeah. you do you work at Geelong? You're doing their media and digital and that kind of stuff. So you're really in that media media space. Mm. Yep. I've always wanted to know people who do socials for like sporting clubs and especially AFL, um, mm. like how you stay positive and how you do the post. Like I was looking at the Geelong post from the, the from the weekend, and I was like. How do you stay positive like when your team is like lost and it's like heartbreaking and you got to like, because nobody's ever like, Cameron missed a sitter or, you know, oh God, we're so devastated. Zach Tui, like, there's never anything like that. Zach Tui wasn't playing. What did he do to you? Yeah. <laughs> but it was, I wasn't talking about that specific game. Anyway, I was like, how do you, do you have like pre approved, like, 
heartfelt messaging or positive messaging or is it something that you come up with on the day like, oh, no, this will get the fans across the line? (laughs) Oh, no, it's definitely sort of um, pre-planned for a win or a loss. But um, similar to as a player when you're walking through the four walls, you hope that with a win or a loss it sort of feels relatively the same. Yeah. Um, So that's sort of like, you know, as Geelong we're very humble custodians and, you know, we just want to project that out to our fans as well. So whether it's a win or loss, I feel like even on the weekend you can't be too disappointed in the way um, the boys wrapped up their season. Absolutely. Definitely got to highlight the positives out of the game. Is there ever a time where you just want to go rogue and just and there's like there's a <laughs> moment on. where you're like, I can definitely get some traction with this, but you've had to pull yourself back? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not really in control of the post, but a few random ideas have been floated that get shut down pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, that's a, that's a great thought. What is the best idea you think you've had that someone said no and why did they say no? Oh, gosh, no. Nah. I don't think I can say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's not going to answer that. I had to ask. She I had to try. not going to answer that at all. <laughs> yeah, got to do it. Uh, <laughs> Just lost. Just thinking about all the bad things I'd say. If I was in control of that, oh man, it'd be a lot. Yeah, yeah there'd be a lot of it. Like, and with that, how hard is it, or is it just something you don't look at? Because obviously, people. Let's be honest, people sometimes suck. When either a team's lost or someone's played badly, is it hard to to see all the comments of people just flooding in after a loss or after a win? If it's the opposition fans, is it just water off a duck's back because they're attacking the club and not you specifically? Um, I've honestly always been really good at just like not even like looking at the comments or anything like that. And part of my role at the club, I'm not really in control of the social media stuff. So I don't really engage with that. But even like as a player throughout, throughout the season, I actually mute AFL women's just because I'm like, I'm surrounded by so much football, even the positives and the negatives. I'm like, I just want to be present and what like the messaging that we're getting from the club you know, like external messaging, I don't really hone into too much. And especially Joe Blow, that's probably having a packet of chips on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> packet of chips yeah. on the couch. Um, that goes actually, it works really well into my next question. Cause on Saturday we saw, um, the Hawthorne Saints game, um, just before the game, there was a big talk about, um, mental health in on, honor of the, the Danny Frawley center. Mm-hmm. How do you manage, you know, your physical fitness, um, being an elite athlete and dealing with all that kind of stuff and looking after your mental health as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I think being organized is a super important one, sort of making sure that when you do have your time out to sort of plan ahead and what works for you. Um, you know, I try to make sure I live with housemates that I grew up in Benalla with. So I sort of have that separation from football. Um, so that's always nice to come home to them and, you know, have a sit down dinner with them. And we're sort of talking about reality TV rather than what happened on the weekend. (laughs) Rather than Um, the stats. So so that's always nice. And then, yeah, just sort of doing things for yourself that, you know, you enjoy, you know, for me, I love going for walks with my friends and um, catching up for coffees and, um, you know, with work and uni and footy, it's quite consuming. So um, I like to stay connected with the people that aren't in that initial bubble. So yeah, those phone calls to family and friends at home is also super important to me. So so it keeps my mental health in check. Because you definitely are very busy, like playing, you're working at the club, you're studying uni. How do you keep up with it all? Organisation. <laughs> are you a bit of a type A personality? Just, you like your list, you got to check uh, it off, you got everything sorted? Yeah. Do you have a lot of post-its, yeah, a lot of highlighters? highlighters and all yeah (laughs) i'm organized chaos it's all up here and on the the schedule on the phone (laughs) i'm catching up with a friend for a walk i've got to put in my diary (laughs) oh okay oh yeah it's all got to go in the diary yeah in fairness geelong is good for some good walks because there are some great bakeries down there so is that sort of something Mm -hmm. that you do to switch off is go on some of those walks just either down by the water or just around the towns it is it is a lovely place to visit it's lovely isn't it it is Stunning. It's so good. I feel like I'm about 10 minutes from Torquay too. So you sort of got the best of both worlds with the beach just there and then the Barwon River and, you know, the waterfront and in summer it's just even better. So love it. One last footy question to ask you before Bridie asks their question. It's very random. You're not going to be prepared for it and you will throw a teammate under the bus. Uh, Obviously the short week this week in footy because you play Fremantle next Tuesday how is that sort of looking provided you get through the game happy and healthy from Thursday to Tuesday? Is there just a bit of a light training run on maybe a Saturday or a Sunday? How do you prepare for three games in a short space of time? 
Yeah, I love it because you're not having to worry about a training run. You're just straight in footy again. Um, I don't know if I'll be saying that after the condensed period, but I'm super excited for it, to be honest. So, yeah, we've got um, – we had a light bit of a light training run today into sort of a main – well, half main session tomorrow, day off Wednesday, then play into Thursday. And then, yeah, Saturday we've got like sort of a light sesh and then sort of our normal football session on Sunday – into the Tuesday game. So okay. as much as we would have loved to have the boys in there, I'm sort of glad I'll be watching the football from the couch on Saturday after training. <laughs> yeah, Because <laughs> I guess it's mainly just really keeping the body moving and, and managing recovery, mm-hmm. I would think. 100%. Uh, yeah, recovery is definitely going to be number one priority in the next couple of weeks. But yeah. um, it's just nice to sort of keep, keep the body ticking and sort of keep the intensity high, but probably not as much load. Yeah. It's nice to hear you excited about it, actually, because yeah. there there are a lot of opinions ar- around about all the games, mm. but it's nice mm. to hear players just being like, I don't want to play footy. Yeah. And, what, uh, you know, yeah. what what can be better than that? I heard Scott yeah. Gowans from the Swans, the coach, he obviously said the same thing uh, about the Swans having a condensed schedule. He's like, well, the girls just want to play footy. Yeah. No training, mm. footy. Yeah. Didn't mind it. All right. Yeah. Okay, Becky Webster, very important question for you. Here we go. Uh, Okay, so you, um, Geelong make the grand final, okay, and you wake up the morning of the grand final, you don't know where you are, no one's around you, you're in a room, and you're like, you look at the time, you're like, I've got to get out of here, I've got like two hours before I'm supposed to be on the field running out for Geelong. You go to leave the room, and you grab the door handle, and you twist it and the door handle comes off and there is no other way out of that room. You look to your phone and you've got reception, but you've got 1% battery. That's it. You've maybe got time for like half a phone call. Mm. Who on your team do you definitely call to get you out of there? Who's going to hook you up? Who's going to get you out of there into the grand final? And who is the least person that you would call who is going to get you out of there oh i love this i was gonna say i'd kick down the door but obviously that's not the <laughs> answer, yes. so. i love the belief oh, i love the belief um who's the problem solver on your team who's going to get you out of there or who's who's the the biggest who's going to bash down the door for you i think i would call because it's game day i'd call claudia because she would answer her phone and she would do anything it takes to get me out of there, I reckon. Excellent. And, um, and she's very witty, so she'd know what to do with good sort of puzzles and stuff. Excellent. Um, someone I probably wouldn't call is maybe Abby McDonald because she might be still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> is she a bit of a sleep old Abby, is she? <laughs> she loves a good sleeping. Yeah. I, I was waiting for useless in a crisis. Yeah. Just the real bust. No, nah, she'll just be asleep. Yeah, that's fair. All right, I'll, I'm going to ask one more question on the back of that. Who from all of the AFLW are you going to call if it's not someone from your team? Does, does it have to not be from my team? Yeah, yeah. It could be you have anyone. To, anyone from any team, but you can't choose yours. Okay. Depends who we're playing, who we're playing. <laughs> uh, you're playing North Melbourne in the grand final. Let's roll that. So you yeah. can call anyone. Like my right. my answer is Anne Hatchard. Yeah, you would just run through the door for me. Yeah. Oh, true. I think I would ring... Tyler Hanks. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Tyler Hanks. I think, I think, I think she would help a girl out. Yeah, she, I reckon she would too. Mm. Yeah. 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 But I think she doesn't mode. like North as much as we don't like North. Oh, so you've got to, got to play on the hatred. Yeah, I get it. Oh, I said, who's going to want you in the game? I love where the head goes that's, with that. Yeah, that's good. I'm very happy with those answers. Thank you. Why? That's why Becky's a vice captain. Yeah. That's that's leadership thinking of that. I'll just bash down the door myself, mate. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Uh, that's this has been great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Becky. Of course, uh, give give the podcast a shout out, give it a plug, so uh, some of our <laughs> listeners can go across and give that a watch and a listen. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, listen in to the yeah, the girls podcast. Usually comes out every Friday as well. So have a have a listen to that. Yeah, yeah the girls. Yeah. What you need to listen <laughs> listen to after Geelong get the job done over Hawthorne this Thursday night at GMHBA Stadium. Kids under eighteen free, and I think it's fifteen bucks for everyone else. Get down to Geelong. 
Get down there. I'll be there. Will you? You're, yes, you're, I'm on the boundary. Oh, there you are. Well, we know who your interview after the game is. That's ah, right, mate. Fancy seeing you here. Let's get another well, 21 possessions. Holiday, it's Friday off. Where else would you want to be? Exactly. I, I got no. I got nothing because I, I got to work. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Becky. This has been a bunch of fun. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Becky. All right. How good was that? Our new best mate. Friend of the pod. Everyone who comes on is our new best mate. Absolutely. So I absolutely love it. But yeah, the Cats and Hawks this week. Bring it mm. on. All right, let's get to the review of the weekend. So we'll start from Thursday night because obviously we talked about Tuesday and Wednesday's game on our Thursday show. So that's what we're going to do this week. We are recording on Wednesday because it is grand final week. Everyone's really busy, <laughs> like mm-hmm. super busy. And we've got a lot of games on Thursday, Friday. So we're just going to cover them all on Wednesday and look Great. ahead. Let's go back to Thursday. It was a long time ago. <laughs> you just said so many days there. I have no idea what we're doing. Footy. We- Footy. Rich- Footy. Richmond, 6-3-39. Defeated Carlton, zero goals, six behind, six points. Carlton on the receiving end of being held goalless after keeping Geelong goalless. Mm. This was weird. It was really weird. What's going on, Carlton? What is going on? Um... I really thought this game was going to be a battle of the mids, um, but Richmond just looked classy right from the get-go, ran all over them. Um, Gearing um, still had 20 possessions. G- Gab Pound, Mimi Hill still had a bit of the footy with 17 possessions yeah. uh, each, uh, but they just couldn't get anything down to their forwards. No. Um, Carlton had five shots from 20, side, uh, 20 inside 50s. So That's 25 just, inside 50s. Okay. So we're going at 20%. Yeah. Didn't take a mark inside 50. That's so you, not going to get This you is why we haven't had a goal. Um, but Richmond had 10 shots from 40 inside 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it also just helped that Mon Condi just decided to go, hey, hey, remember me? <laughs> I rule. Yes. Watch this. She was on fire. She was just in everything in that 11 game. 11 clearances, yeah. 33 touches, just a casual reminder. Yeah. Best player in it. Yeah. I'm going to change that a lot throughout the year, but just reminding us how good she actually mm-hmm. is. And All- K- KB was also back to her best this week. She was she was in a lot. And, uh, yeah, I was happy should, to should, say Should be thanking us for, like, revving her up a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> like, is, is this on us? Kate five, Brennan, friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. Five <laughs> goals in two games. Ever since that, what are you doing, Kate? Lift. Yeah. yeah. Katie Brennan just goes, okay, bang, bang, goals. Mm-hmm. And it set up the win. Like, I only had the eight touches, uh, sorry, the seven touches, kick two goals. But uh, the, as Stats Guy has now proclaimed, Caitlin Grazer as the G-Train. G-Train, roll, absolutely. Rolling with G-Train, three goals. But it's like, you've got your key forwards kicking five between them. Probably going to win. Yep, 100%. And this was just a good win. It's good to see Richmond actually back it up after the beating the Swans at Coffs Harbour the week before. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, they're three and one. Like, hey. hey. Yeah, they look good, right? They're trying to prove you very wrong. Yeah. Look, you know, I've been hard on the Tigers mm-hmm. only because how good their list is and how good I think they should be playing. But it was good to see them, although they're up against Carlton. Carlton aren't a great side at the moment. But we expe- after what they did to Geelong, we expected a high intense battle I did between the mids. More. But Correct. Richmond just went, nah. And it was yeah. like the same the week before against the Swans. It was adults against children in the midfield. Just mm-hmm. like, <laughs> step aside. Yeah. Uh, also, Ellie McKenzie downgraded to a fine. Yes. The tribunal sat on a Monday morning. What a novel idea. <laughs> I mean, it's probably because Richmond are playing on Tuesday night, but maybe this is something we should do in the men's game too. Hey, we had an incident on Thursday. Let's get it done by start of business on Monday. You've really got a feeling about that. I you, hate Alex? tribunal decisions that when someone gets like, someone sling tackles someone on the Thursday and they're their hearing is until Tuesday night. It's a waste of time. It's an embarrassment for the sport that we have to wait this on. It's like, why don't you just do it at midday on Monday? Get it done. So we all know. So poor David Zeta is not, not tweeting at 1am going, yeah, the tribunal is still deliberating. Should be done. Anyway, that's my rant for today. How are the fan base is feeling? Uh, Richmond fans are up and about. Yeah, they really are. And they should be. They should be. They're just, they're chipping away, Richmond. Yeah. Yes, chip, chip, chipping away. The Richmond women's team have now won more games than the men's team in four weeks. Just wanted to point that out. Just, okay. just really give it a Richmond. Okay, okay mate. And Carlton fans are like, what the hell, man? What happened there? Yeah. Yeah. They're we, really confused. Yeah, I thought Carlton might have been a bit more um, up and about. And yeah. Yeah. No, nah, it's disappointing. Friday, Whitnoval, North Melbourne, 6-6-42 to Port Adelaide, a one goal, six 
This was a game of two halves. This was a game of weather. This was Melbourne going, hey. <laughs> this was a game of weather. Yeah. This was just like, if you believe in God, this was him just going, him, her, whoever, they, them, just going, yeah, I'm just going to throw this. Mm-hmm. Here's some hail. Here's some lightning. Here's some wind. It didn't look fun. It didn't. I, I was at the pub in Sydney watching this on the screen going, Oh, that looks like it had sucked to be there. Yep. And also, um, as a person who is a boundary rider, <laughs> that <laughs> is definitely a game you do not want to be at at all. I've done it before. I've re- I've been out there out of Box Hill w- once out in the worst weather. Would you retreat to the commentary position? No, you can't. Okay. It's not a it's not a thing. I may have you seen, are a uh, boundary rider. You stay on the boundary until the game is done. I may have seen a certain boundary rider who will remain nameless leave their boundary position one day when it was raining. Not gonna name names because that must be a big no no in the little fraternity you guys have. Mm. No I'd, don't guess. <laughs> I would only I I would only not be out there if it was dangerous. Like lightning. Like lightning. But that's when they go yeah, Thunder, everyone off. Lightning. <laughs> The way you play it, it's frightening. No, okay, That's good. The, how North Melbourne played in the first half was frightening. Yeah, North were really dominant um, in that first half. They were uh, amazing, really clear on their structure, uh, really strong in, de- in defence. But obviously, as we've said before, I mean, we can't be too critical on their play in the weather when it's like that. Oh, like, I'm not gonna how- be cri- <laughs> the, the second half, I'm just like, doesn't count. Like the the game was over at halftime, so yeah. we, we can both ag- we can all agree on that. Yeah, but. You know, Jasmine Garner was running around the first half. It's just like, is anyone going to stand next to me? Nah, cool. Yeah. See ya. Still had 30 touches, still gained nearly 600 metres. Ashradell, another 30 touches. Thought Mia King was good as well. 17 tackles. Yeah. Me- she is elite, Mia yeah. King. Yeah. Uh, I thought Abby Dowrick was good for Port as well, but they're just, you can't take too much. What you take away from this is North good, Port not at that level. And then the second half, it literally hailed sideways. Yeah. You know, you, the family guy thing. Uh, it's raining sideways. <laughs> Sounds rough, Ollie. Yes. <laughs> Did you have an umbrella? He had one. It's six miles out, inside out and away. And everyone just wants some soup just to stay warm. Well said. It's a good well bit. Well said. Uh, also, Teeks, absolutely, you know, got another goal. Yeah, she did. In in <laughs> the conditions, the footage of that goal is yeah. absolutely hilarious. But to Port's credit, they did dominate that third quarter. They just didn't make most of the inside 50s. They no, had. absolutely not. But, yeah, they spent 70% of the time in their yeah. forward half. So it's I know it's really, really hard to score, but on, on paper you're like, can you yeah. can you get one or two yeah. in there just to just to put the seeds of doubt? Yeah, uh, would you have uh, been like annoyed if anyone at halftime went? I'm just going to chuck on the long sleeve now. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, like, yeah. absolutely <laughs> not. Go for it. We saw a lot of long sleeves this weekend. Do love a good long sleeve. Uh, anyway. I have a stat here for you. All right. North Melbourne most tackles in a game in AFLW history. Yeah, 129. They, yeah, that's ridiculous. That's huge. Absolutely huge. That's like th- like what three a minute. Two a minute? I'm not going to try this, if it's Because we go 17 minutes, so mm-hmm. it's 34. No, so it's t- nearly two a minute. I was publicly educated. Yeah, okay. We don't try and work that out. <laughs> <laughs> Maths is <are> my thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a bit, it's just it's less than two a minute, which is insane. So anyway, fan base is like North, like sick. Another yeah. win, cool. Knock it off. Let's go on to yeah. the next one. Yeah, let's get in the sauna instead of the ice bath. And Porter just like, yeah, we, we knew. Yeah. We knew. All right, let's get to Saturday up at, uh, what is it? No, it's, uh, is it Heritage Bank? What's it called now? I can't remember. The, whatever the Gold Coast Stadium's called now. I was going to try and call it uh, IBF Park, what it used to be. It's People had, First Stadium. It's had so many names. Yes. People uh, First, this one. Well, I'll tell you what, Geelong didn't put their fans first oh, as they belted Gold Coast. Uh, 4 3 27 for the Suns, Geelong. 15 6 96. Mm-hmm. It was 62 0. <laughs> It was 62 nil. Yeah, it was a it was a dominating, wasn't it? As someone who saw my Swans be down 71 to 1 at one point this year. This feels worse. Mm. Yeah, it was and also what's going on Geelong? Where is your consistency, please? How's this 71% disposal efficiency and 60% efficiency inside 50? Well, 47 inside 50s to Gold Coast 27. Yeah, it's because the ball hit the ground and Maloney was like, I'm just going to pick it up and run and <laughs> no one's going to tackle me. Like, yeah. It, like, just was dead set taking the piss. Mm-hmm. It was like, you're not going to tackle me? I'm going to run in and kick a goal. Yeah. It was great to watch. I was like, yeah. but it's also like, 
where has this been all season from Geelong? And at the same time, like, oh, what's going on with this Gold Coast defense, which we knew was bad. Yeah. But it was just, it, it was, it had more holes than Swiss cheese. <laughs> It's actually really good to see that Geelong can do this when they need to. When, yeah. you know, we know Gold Coast is not having a great season. They're, they're pretty poor defensively at the moment. So They're just poor in general. The, yeah, the fact that Geelong, Geelong was able to step up and absolutely dominate shows that they that they do have that capability. Yes, Maloney, uh, four goals. Shelley Scott and Jack Parry with three goals each as well. Yeah. So that's, yeah, 10 goals between the three of them. That's very impressive. How big is this margin without Chuck? Chuck Rowbottom and Claudia Whitford. Mm. Is it 100? Because they've had 29, 25, and they've had 15 clearances between them and yes, laid 16 huge. tackles. Yeah. Like, yep. that is trying everything mm -hmm. and just not getting near it whatsoever. Like, you look at down the bottom of this, you had, what is it, about seven, seven, nine, ten sons with less than 10 touches. Yep. Not doing Which enough. Doth not win you a game. No. Uh, it's good to see that Geelong actually can do this also without Prasparkas being there yep. as well, which maybe it's like, okay, we've won a game. Maybe we can take our time getting her back to full fitness. Yep. Have but we have we had any notes out of the Prasparkas Geelong camp about when she might be up and about? No. Zero. No, nothing yet. Okay. It's disappointing. Yeah. Come on, give us something. Yeah. Because I need to I need to win. It's not a bet. It's just more just for pride at this point that I'm, you know, team Georgie over Maddie and <laughs> really can't win it when you're not on the field. Hey. Okay. Matty Press Park is out there breaking collarbones. Georgie's like, oh, just, I don't know. That's because clearly Georgie's just a nicer person. <laughs> has great vibes. Uh, anyway, fan bases, Gold Coast Suns are just like, yeah, this is like the opening days of the expansion. Yeah, it's pretty, they're, they're not playing well. They're not playing well, Gold Coast. Um, yeah. What do you do? Play the kids. As we said it after round two, just like, yeah. you just got to keep playing. And yeah, you got to get minutes into your younger players. Good luck. Yeah. And Geelong are just like, can we do it against Hawthorne? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one because yeah. ooh, the Hawks. Moving on. See, segue, ooh. podcasting. I love that yeah, segue. Look at that. St Kilda, 2-5-17, belted. By Hawthorne, eleven eight seventy four down at RESA Arena. This was unexpected. I I sent two screenshots into our group chat at about three o'clock. I, pro, I probably mm -hmm. think it was uh, one with a swear word and and another one going, "What the bloody hell is happening at Morabin?" Mm. Got no response. It's really good <laughs> to see my coworkers just like, "Yeah, Alex, it's wild." Nothing. I was busy watching a game. Could have been like, "Yeah, it's give me something." We well, you know, like the Saints. They they kicked off pretty well, right? Like Wardlaw's up and about, Wardlaw, couple of grabs, like, a goal. Yeah, okay, this is what we were expecting, you know. Um, Hawks, uh, Hawks, Hawks didn't kick didn't kick a goal in that first quarter. They were they were goalless until halfway through the second quarter. Yeah. Like watching it this morning, I was like, I need to sit down and see what's happened here. Yeah, and when you see the scoreline, but then you watch the replay, you're like, what? Mm. It's not. Like it's just like oh, bang, goal, goal, goal to get going. It's like. They they didn't kick a goal for a quarter and a half. Yeah, but then our good mate Greta Bodie decided, oh, I might actually kick a bag of six today, guys. At Moorabbin, where it where the winds go around like yeah. a goddamn tornado. Yeah, um, six because, straight. Yeah, in the first couple of in the first couple of games, you know, because she's a senior player there coming into this great new Hawthorne side. First couple of games struggled to kick the goals, yeah. definitely was having a crack, and now she's come out and booted six. Like, well done, Greta Bowie. Yeah. That was amazing. Like, we talked about Carlton. Didn't take a mark inside 50 all night Thursday. Hawthorne decided to take 14 inside 50. Mm -hmm. Kick 11 goals. Like, there, there is there, there is your stark contrast between winning a game easily and getting belted. Yeah. Marks inside 50, are, it's probably the most underrated stat in AFLW because considering, you know, the – amount of goals that come from probably 25 metres in, mm -hmm. taking a mark 15 metres out, it's like, okay, like probably seven to eight times out of 10, you're probably going to be kicking the goal at the moment. Yeah. Well, we've seen some sitters miss, but we're seeing some very good goal kicking at the moment. Like, look at these scores. We are lines. seeing some very good goal kicking at the there moment. There was one, right. I'll get to it at Henson Park. Whoa. We what just saw Hawthorne play a really good game of footy, which we're now coming to expect from them and the way Daniel Webster has yeah. set up their play, they're really good set up outside 50. They cover the ground really well, strong defense, good super fast forwards. Like they're, they're, they've got 
every part of the game covered really, really well. The Irish contingent are just like awesome. Okay, so I got into the group chat after you. Yeah. Um, about Aileen Gilroy with her um warm up pregame. Yeah. You know how everyone they do that, like those hitting each other yeah. on the shoulders, getting you know getting yourself revved up, but also getting your body prepped to to take hits and as, that kind as of stuff. As corporate Jim says, the human ba- human body craves contact. Exactly, and that is exactly what <laughs> Aileen Gilroy was doing. So you saw her. There's a video of her doing it with one of her teammates, yeah. and and it's full on. Like they're going for yeah. it. It's anyway, like, let's go! And then they blow a whistle and yeah. then they go, you know. Anyway, she's so intense. She's so intense when she does it. She has to, like, upgrade to, like, one of the male trainers. This guy was, like, thick and she's just like, boom, boom. I was like, this is so good. How good are Irish players? Now on the list of players that I don't want to mess with, alongside Ebony Marinov, Kennedy, welcome to the list. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we for, for St Kilda, they just – <laughs> they look slow. Yeah, they look slow. They look sloppy. They didn't look like they had uh, any pressure, any run at the bottom, and didn't kick a goal in that second half, you know. Mm. So they really, really dropped off. Um, I'll be really interested to see, you know, so how they're going to tackle that during the week. With all tips and Kilda in this game, we look back to last week. St Kilda just get past Essendon. Hawthorne, good, courageous, but ultimately pushed aside by the Crows. Hindsight, coming off of conte- like losing by four or five goals against Adelaide, probably better than just sneaking by Essendon. Mm. So, and we look at who St Kilda have beaten so far this season. Like they've smashed Gold Coast, got by Sydney, easily could have lost that one, get by Essendon. Mm. Did we overrate the Saints? I know this is, we're going to be Monday quarterbacking. Are you quarterbacking. calling easy draw? Are we going to be Monday quarterbacking or Monday quarterback all year? But it's like, are we going, oh, yeah, softer draw? Mm. But then Hawthorne had smashed Collingwood and, you know, beaten Carlton. It, I, I expected more, I 100%. Did too. I, it was our, like, game of the round, keep an eye on. Like, well, this it was, was going to be. Hawthorne were awesome. They were really, really good. Really good. Fan bases, Hawthorne are like, yeah, sick. Mm. Hockball 2.0. Yeah. And St. Kilda are just like, um, what? Yeah. Little blip. Let's regroup. Yeah, let's see what happens next week. With it. All right, let's get across to Fremantle Oval in Perth where do we claim the miracle on grass? Not a, not a miracle on grass, but a, what do we call it? A, I have no a, idea what you're trying to say. Alex. Like a miracle on grass was when Brisbane Lions came from like 60 points down to beat Geelong. Mm-hmm. This wasn't like that, but this, because it's more, this could go down to the Kate Hall stuff. Why don't we, why don't we just call it the comeback queens? Yeah, where? let's go with that. <laughs> Trying to come up with something, but you know what? What if the Dockers don't want don't want me to call them the comeback queens? And then you know, Kara uh, Bowers, you know, just just puts her newborn baby down and decides to kick my ass for it. And uh, what about comeback people? <laughs> that sounds so bad. Um, how about just how about just Frio? Way to go! Yeah. Oh, hey, Frio, yeah. way to go. Yeah. Hey, anyway, hey. Frio won 7547 to 6541 with a go after the siren. Yeah, that was good. Footy. Yeah, that footy. was really good. So you're right? <sighs> yeah, I'm hyped. Okay, great. Yeah. That was a ridiculous comeback, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they're amazing. How good was Gabby O'Sullivan? She kicked three goals and she was just around the ball in everything all day. I we, absolutely loved it. I love a good score worm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to send this one to Gerald as our first score worm of the season just to bring up on the screen right now because Frio were not in this game Mm -hmm. at all and just went, we're going to kick four goals in the last quarter to win it after not looking great in the first three. Well, first half, they weren't Well, Melbourne kicked like four goals in the first quarter and then they kicked the first goal of the second quarter. Like they looked – like they were just going to, you know, old school Melbourne running over the top of them. Yep. But then Frio kicked chip, a goal chip, chip. going into halftime. Yeah. And, you know, like the goals on the siren in terms of like having the potential to pump a team up. Yeah. I think that is exactly what happened here. Yeah, I agree. They came out a different Fremantle side. Yeah. And it's like you have, you know, they got their defense sort of set up well because let's remember the golden rule. Kate Hall kicks two or more, you're going to lose. <laughs> one goal, one. I think it's now they're, what, two and ten in the last two years since she's done that. Mm-hmm. So that stat will continue to live on. Mm. So I'm up on our TikTok right now. Go check it out. Uh, she had a chance. <laughs> 
I don't want so to. Do I want to? Yeah, I'm going to sink the boots in. Go on. Kate Hoare kicks it out in the full. You know, in, in a game where margins matter. Yeah. Yeah. The superstar of the team. Yeah. We talk about old mate, no mates. <laughs> Get on the bus at the end of the game. You got a five hour flight home. Liza McNamara has had, you know, 31 touches, has just played one of the best games of her life. And she's like, really? You're going to do that? <laughs> Come on, Kate. Oh, I think when you well, see uh, Kate holds everyone together. Yeah, no, I love you, Kate. Please don't kill me. But it was it bad was, time to do it. Yeah, it was the out on the full. Um, with close games and the and the um your know, goals after sign us up, I like to watch that last bit and just see who's going to be feeling really bad about themselves after this. And yeah. then I looked at it, and it was Kate in both both patches of play out on the full, and then she goes to kick a clearing <laughs> kick out of defensive fifty, and she just someone puts like a hand on her from behind, mm-hmm. and because she didn't hit the kick. She gave away the free kick and I was like, oh, God, Kate's going to feel awful about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gab Newton, phenomenal again. Yeah. That move across to Freo has been absolutely fantastic for, yep. for her. Uh, Mim Strom, 27 mm. hitouts in the ruck. Like we talked about uh, Melbourne's lack of issues or issues in the midfield and Mim's just like, yep, yeah, sick, bang, bang. Yeah, they're really um, they're really stepping up, Freo. Mm. Like I thought, George, like Georgia Campbell's still good, but just me was just like, yeah. yeah. When you have sixteen disposals of a ruck, when you're doing a good job, mm-hmm. they they got the job done. Like, yeah, this is we talked about it last week. It's like that. This is just that experienced team finding a way, but they did it against another experienced team. Yeah. So you can't you can't really write Freo off at any stage, really. Yeah. So the fan base is free. Like, yeah, sick. This is awesome. Yeah, they'll be very happy. We don't care about margins. We can do it. (laughs) This is great. We only care about the win after the siren. The rule is you don't pay on margins. You get paid if you win. Correct. So they did that. I need to send Gerald that score. Uh, And Melbourne just like, oh, boy. It's a deep breath. It's a deep breath moment for Melbourne. And they'll uh, they'll need to regroup and just, just see what happened there. They are in Barney rubble. Trouble. Yeah. Sunday. Is that Ocean's Eleven? I can't remember. Yeah. I think it yeah. is. Let's Gerald? Get, he's not giving us nothing. Can't, uh, can't ask the intern. She's too young to know Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> like, Ocean's 27, maybe. <laughs> Ocean's 8? Yeah. Anyway, let's get to Sunday. The Adelaide Crows did what we thought they'd do. Dispose of Essendon uh, 62 to 29. Your Bombers had a crack. They actually did have a crack. And when I was watching it, because they were taking it up and they were in the lead at one point very early on, they were in the lead. Um, but it when, you, when you're not as good as Adelaide and you're you try waiting. and take it to them, they go, oh, cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get away, and you. And they're like, oh, okay, I might just, I'll just put it into second gear, shall yeah. I? Um, and they, they ran away with it. I thought... Um, Bannister kicked a great goal from the boundary, great set shot from yeah. the boundary. So there, there are little things that you can um, take away with it. Um, but, yeah, it was it was Adelaide, Adelaide, Adelaide. Yeah, but, like, you had Steph Kane and Brooke Walker, like, laying a lot of tackles. I've had a lot of issues all season with Essendon not laying any tackles whatsoever. Yep. They've had 17 between them. So they haven't, like, not a massive output as far as possessions are concerned, but a lot of tackles, which is against a team like Adelaide. Yep. That's good to see because you're not letting uh, Marinoff and Hatchard just absolutely waltz through. Yep. Marinoff, again, probably going to get another three votes to make it a perfect four from four to start her season. Yeah, Kicked a goal. Had the game that I like to see out of all good players, 23 disposals, 21 kicks. <laughs> None of this handball business. No handballs. I'm getting along. 661 metres gained. Uh, Maddie Gay was quite good as well for yep. Essendon. She's really like working into the year quite well. A lot of rebound possessions, of course. Maddie Prasparkas, good again. May have just destroyed someone's collarbone. Adds no to good. the list of people I don't want to mess with. Um. Just too quick, Adelaide, in the I end. mean, they're too good. I mean, we knew they were going to run all over the Bombers. I thought Ponta, again, was really good. Gould, Kelly. Um, Ponta, I loved. Uh, she kicked this goal where she, they, they ran after it yeah. and she slapped it down like she was playing basketball and then just a kick off the ground and yeah. then went through for a goal. She's, she's magical. There was some good, good goal celebrations from the Crows as yeah. well. But this is, every well, like, as we said, Adelaide are just going to do what they need to do to beat these teams and get the job done. Yeah. But – Again, for us and in the Warriors, they got caught out in transition again, yeah. which it's what 
it's something that's come from their men's program across to the W. Just but just caught out in transition. It's yeah. it is noticeable that some of these things do seemingly come across. I don't know if there's staffing that sort of goes from one from one if team to another. There's staff that says, "Can you please be bad in transition?" Let's <laughs> no, just but have it's, that if it's like if it's the same coaching philosophy that the club wants to play. Yeah, okay. Um, which I don't know if that is, I don't agree with it. Play to the strengths of what your team is. I know that Essendon don't have their best player at the moment. Yeah, still recovering from injury and just sprinting upstairs. Yeah, like a psycho. Yeah. Please get back, Bonnie. We need She's we, so we need good. you back. Yeah. Uh yeah. So I just think if they can start working a bit stronger defensively in transition and running with the opponents, yeah. maybe they can get closer to a team yeah. like Adelaide. And just getting numbers around the ball and being yeah. able to, yeah, yeah, push up the ground yeah. and I don't know, maybe have a forward to kick two. Is, is that that kind of helps mm-hmm. too. Anyway, fan bases crows like, yeah, sick. Good vibes at uh the Sturt Oval. And Essen like, oh well, wasn't terrible. Like <laughs> as as a Bombers fan base person, I can say yes, that's exactly how we are. Had a crack. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Wasn't ones you, terrible. You walk away, you've lost by five guys. Be like, that's cool. Yeah, like this uh, like, could have been a lot more. Yeah, like last year when this the Swans when the Swans women started the season, the games going to like yeah, within three goals, I'll be happy. Then they started winning. Like, oh, this is great. Yeah. So yeah, feel it. All right, let's get to Victoria Park, Collingwood, two three fifteen. Defeated by the Western Bulldogs, who kicked nine goals. Yoo! Doggies! You love to see yeah. it, don't you? I, I love to see it. Nine three fifty seven. Ellie Blackburn on the crutches after the game, carrying on like it was the greatest day of her life. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't bring a smile to your face and just like how good is footy, yep. you don't have a soul. Yeah. I love Ellie, and she would have hated not being out there, but she would have felt just pure joy for what they've been able to do. So they brought their second half performance against the Lions to this game. Mm. I know Collingwood kicked a goal in the first, like, seven seconds mm-hmm. and then kicked one goal for the rest of the game. Yeah. Not great. But the dogs, they were running, they were carrying, they weren't as sloppy. I guess that also happens when you pl- go from playing Brisbane to playing Collingwood. Yeah. It's like the, one of the best teams to be arguably the worst team in the league right now. So yes. You don't even have to argue the latter shows that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> but I thought Isabel Pritchard was just like, okay, I haven't got Ellie around. I'm going to do a lot of this. Yeah. I'm going to be everywhere. A lot of the grunt work in and under. 15 of her 28 possessions were handballs. Yeah, and she needs to be. I mean, the, the, they need someone to step up, you know, with with Ali being out, and I think that she did great. I think uh, Barry did really well as well. Um, who else? Weston Turner, two goals. That's a great name still. Still love the name. Yeah. She's got a double hy- hyphen, yeah. Chrissy Lee Weston Turner. Um, but, you know, she's number one draft pick, so you want her to, like, get the first, go- get the up first there. goal, and everyone's like, hey, yeah, get around the draft pick. Um, Heidi Woodley as well also k- kicked two goals as well. So, um, and your your favorite, old Grigsy. Excited. The rundown tackle. Oh, it was good. It's like, oh, don't do it. You're going to go. You got caught. <laughs> Saw it coming. Saw it coming. I definitely know why you're losing your voice, mate. <sighs> Well, it was, uh, no, it was Matt Stevick's fault. <laughs> Anyone who watched the Swans on Friday night would know why. Yeah. I'm just excited. Like, what are you? Yeah. And also, like, for Collingwood, yes, they've been beaten, but, like, Ruby may have played one of her best games with seven yeah. clearances. I know, disappointed with the loss. Sarah Rowe just keeps just smacking in. Do they need to move Rubes around? Would you play her in the midfield? Oh. Where would you play? Because the thing is, if you got her at half back, at least, yes, this will sound bad. It's meant to. She's going to see a lot more of the footy at half back than she's at half forward. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I see what you're doing there. Like, get the footy in the hands. I'd like, yeah, I'd like them to have a little bit of an option. Yeah, but get the footy in the hands of your best distributor rather than be like, ah, oh, we hope it gets to her. Yeah. But it's it's the, for the Swans, it would have been the Chloe Malloy problem. Mm. Sit her at half forward, ball's not getting there. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. So I'd say stick either stick her in the midfield or keep her at the half back. Yeah. And just with some run and carry. Problem okay. is Collingwood... Literally everyone's injured. Yeah. So I, we can't be too harsh on where they're putting players because mm-hmm. they've literally got no one to pick from. And that sort of leads to like this one's a quicker wrap because it is 17th, 16th and 18th. And good on the dogs for getting the job done. It wasn't a great spectacle, but all the way through just watching, the dogs are just going to win this. Yeah. So there is concern. Collingwood are just like, oh, this this just sucks. Like yeah. that. It's from what I'm just like seeing on social media as well from fans that are going to games, it's like, this isn't great. This mm. isn't great one for the club, but it's also not great for 
for the league as well, having mm-hmm. a team that's going so poorly. It it comes up with the whole discussion about list sizes, yeah, training bases, all that, all that that goes into it. If we're going to cram so many games, maybe we need to extend to thirty five players on a list. Yeah, and I think that this that's what will be taken out of this. Season. Or you know, just don't play three games in ten days. Yeah, I think that's what will be taken out of this season. You mm-hmm. know, because we've been trying to increase those list sizes, um, and so to see, I mean. This is kind of like the proof in the pudding, right? You're like, this is what can happen if we don't increase the yeah. sizes. And, you know, a very uh, proud, very uh, renowned club has been reduced to this. And their fans because, are not happy. Yeah. Which, and I'm not a Collingwood lover by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. I got you back in this one. Yeah. This sucks. Do you think it's something that they need to address mid-season? No. Can you do, can no, you do something that like that mid-season? Like, cha- like uh, I suppose, like... That comes with salary cap list sizes, so you can't you can't really do it. So mm. it's something. Basically, grand final happens next day. Yep, tick done. Move like it's, okay. You've got it in the drafts already. Yep, it's in the Great. drafts. Ready it's in the hit. drafts. Re- Can you hit send uh, the grand yeah. final? Thank Gra- you. Siren goes in the grand final. Send to all clubs. Let's get this one out there to everyone. Uh, fan base is calling it a lot. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, and the dogs are like lids off. Yeah, lids off. They it's grand final week. They're getting hammered, having the best time ever. Let's go to Sydney Henson Park. The Battle of the Bridge. I've got a lot of Sydney fans yelling at me right now because I said it on Friday night to annoy a bunch of them. <laughs> well, I'm a Swans fan, but I just love like, you know, just poking the bear. What's wrong with Battle of the Bridge? Well, no, because they have the Sydney Derby for the... Because everyone in Sydney hates the Battle of the Bridge because oh, it's the Anzac Bridge, not the Harbour Bridge. Okay. Yeah, and it's just like, just call it the Derby. Like, yeah. No one, no one <laughs> yes, call it the Derby. Yeah, because it doesn't get you to Greater Western Sydney, that bridge. Get you to Balmain. Okay. <laughs> Which Balmain's awesome. I know no directions in Sydney. So it's the inner west of Sydney. If you leave the city and go over the, the Anzac Bridge, you get to the inner west of Sydney, like Balmain, Croydon, Ashfield. It's not the greater western Sydney. You're in the inner west. You'd, you'd enjoy the inner west. Your vibe. Are you sure? Yeah, I reckon you Nothing would. about Sydney is my vibe. Yeah, I reckon you'd enjoy Newtown. <laughs> Keeps, all right, Newtown rules. I love Newtown. Anyway, the Swans won 6 of 3, uh, 6 of 7, 43 to 6 4, 40. You look at the score and go, this game was awesome. So the Swans scored three goals in the first quarter and then didn't kick a goal for two quarters. <laughs> They're pretty inaccurate, weren't they? It's, oh. uh, you've got here, oh, I love reading your notes. Privatelli, what the hell? 0 oh, and 3. Yeah, okay. So first of all, vibes at Henson Park. That looked sick. You love it out there, don't you? It's it's in a good spot. So this is the inner west of Sydney. So mm-hmm. this is so you you turn left at going out of Newtown. You go all you go down this one road. I can't remember what it's called. You turn left and then uh, Henson Park is right there. Great, great spot. Like so easy to get to. You catch a train. You can just walk down there and get a. It's easy to get to. Anyway, I need to get to Beck Privatelli off the top. Takes a mark like basically top of the goal square free kick mark. I can't remember now, but I just remember. It's actually, it was a downfield free kick. And Privatelli's like, oh, yeah, well, this should be a goal. Just very lackadaisical, decides to do the snap around the corner. Oh, did she? From like 12 metres out. And kicks a goddamn behind. <laughs> now, Beck. Just oh, you have, are you doing wise words? Please, let me get my popcorn out. I saw this later in the game from Cynthia Hamilton. Go look at what Cynthia did. Takes a mark, studs on the mark, like where the mark is, takes the seven steps back, another mark there, and then the further steps back. Run up. Has a preparation. What Logan McDonald does for the men's team. Same thing every time. None of this smart assery around the corner business. Why is everyone scared of a drop punt now? Because statistically speaking, those snaps do have a better accuracy, like from those distances. But when you're basically bang on in front from 12 meters out, for the love of God, kick. If you missed from kicking a drop punt and but going through a routine, not mad. Got a routine, that that's just law of averages. You're gonna miss a goal now and then. But doing a very it was very it looked lazy. Oh. And from a player who I expect a lot of, who's one of the focal points of the Swans forward line, I was very disappointed. And when they if they'd lost that game, that's the moment. Oh, okay. They won by three I'm points. Very upset about this, Alex. Goal kicking is like one of my Biggest bugbears in football. I feel like we could do a whole episode on it. Yes. Okay. So yeah. just touch on it very lightly. Yeah. So I love players who have a set shot routine and do the same thing every time. Yep. So there's players in the men's game that have a routine every time. And you know what they do? They kick goals. And it works. 
Players who do this little, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. They run around on an arc or whatever and they miss and they spray them. Doesn't work. Isaac Heaney could not hit the side door of a barn last year. He has a routine this year. He's kicking goals. He's the best player in the men's game right now. Caddy Brennan has a routine. Sophie Conway has a routine. Anyway, let's get to the game. Let's move on from my just rant about goal kicking. This ruck battle was awesome from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Because the Swans, obviously, Ali Morfitt wasn't picked. We should mention that off the top. She she was rested again. They're going to just manage her throughout the season, which yeah. is a bit of an issue. Yeah. But you had Giselle Davies and Alexia Hamilton for the Swans going up against Alicia Dowd. The Swans won that. It was, you know, uh, about 40 hitouts to 18 for uh, Dowd. But just a fun matchup throughout the day that I thought – O'Dowd can walk away from it going, you know, she's had 15 touches. She's probably like, yeah, I probably got the points there. Didn't win the ruck battle, but yeah. around the ground, she's won the contest there. Um, the midfield battle is just like Laura Gardner is just. My she's God. so good, isn't she? Oh, my God. She just, but does everything as well. It's one of those ones like if the Swans don't have her, they don't win this game of football. Mm-hmm. Like I know it's only six clearances, but five marks, eight tackles, a goal assist. She's absolutely everywhere. Cynthia Hamilton back in. We mentioned how big of a loss she was for the Swans yep. last week. Kicks two goals, has 20 touches. One of the best games I can remember her playing, to mm-hmm. be honest. I thought she was fantastic. For the Giants, Zala Goldsworthy pops up with a couple of goals. Yeah. She's just going to be she's one of She's elite. Yeah. Yeah. 16 touches, two goals. But it's like when she gets to the point where she's having 20 to 25, look out because yep. those other nine touches are going to really hurt you. Uh, the Giants, like – they were in it, but they weren't in it. It just felt like as soon as the Swans got their crap together, they were just going to win the game. But they weren't clinical enough, and they kept GWS in the game. And I think Sydney's inaccuracy and not being able to get on the scoreboard really hurt them. Yep. Um, and I think that they probably should have won by a lot more. So yeah. 11 shots from 41 inside 50s is not – Yeah. That's not where you want to be. No. And I said last week I was very annoyed about their movement inside forward 50 and the, all the territory that they had and not mm-hmm. using it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was actually better yesterday, yeah. and, even though they've had all those inside 50s. Uh, it looked better than what it did against Richmond. Maybe that's playing against a lesser opponent. Uh, Montana Ham also keeps just having these moments, mm-hmm. just waiting for her to have a full game. But you can tell at the end of the game – uh, a GWS player just took off out of the midfield the minute left and Montana was like, oh, I just, I'm done. Oh, like, cooked. Was, was just, she was cooked. Yeah. Also did cop the massive sling tackle in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. So Pauga, probably looking at a couple of weeks there. You reckon more than one? I reckon two. Okay. So it, w- it was everything that we don't want to see. It's You've got this, you got the single and you just go, what? Yeah. Just absolutely throw her over. Okay. And she smashes her head into the ground. Uh, so we'll see also how I think Goldsworthy and Tarrant had a head clash too. The Swans were down to two people on the bench at one point. Oh. Yeah. So, but then everyone was all cleared and good to go. So it'd be good. very interesting to see. Swans got the quick backup against the Dogs this week. I think GWS are in Melbourne too. Anything else from it, from that game apart from me hating goal kicking? No. Okay. Uh, Lucy McAvoy also played well too. <laughs> Fan bases. Swans are like, we own Sydney. 4 and 0 across both competitions in derbies this year. Sydney is red and white. I'm in the I'm in the jumper every every day this week leading up to the grand final. I'll be in a Swans piece of memorabilia of some sort. How much memorabilia do you have? Not as much as you think. <laughs> I have four t-shirts, a jumper and a jacket and a hat. But I know people who scarf? I got a scarf somewhere, but the last time I wore the scarf we lost, so the scarf's just Oh, I'm okay. one. I'm one of those. The scarf is banished. The it. scarf is banished. So okay. yeah. So I'm one of those. Like, I'm very uh, superstitious. Gotcha. Yeah. So like, every time that my partner has come with me to a Swans game, the Swans have lost. Oh, she cannot go and watch Swans games ever again. Yeah. And that'll make her thrilled. My partner is the opposite. When she watches, yeah. the Bombers win. Oh, really? So I was like, come watch it. And she just hates footy. And yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> actually also hates me watching football. Yeah, actually mine does I, too. Yeah, there's a, there's a demon that comes out inside of me and I get angry. Like I'm not an angry person, yeah. but if the Bombers are playing bad, like. Do you get frustrated or angry? Oh, no, I get angry. Okay. Yeah, like she closes the windows if they're open because she doesn't <laughs> want to hear, hear the neighbours and me talking. Would you believe out of like my family, my mum was the lippiest one on mm. Friday night? Yeah. I thought it would have been my dad for sure. Because mm. like I just. Mum gets around it. Ma, yeah, she just, it was a common sense thing. And then she thought that the swans were being cheated. So she was really, she was a bit lippy. Gotcha. It's pretty funny to watch yeah. actually. At one point I was like, mum, you're wrong. Shut up. <laughs> and my dad gave me a backhand. I was like, hey. 
My mum just gets really high pitch and you're like, I don't want to know that. And you're like, what are you saying? Yeah, mum was slightly high pitched, but you can hear like it's a screech. Yeah. Love yeah. you, mum. Love you, mum. <laughs> anyway, fan base, this one's like, yep, yeah, sick. GWS yeah. like, hmm, probably could have stolen it. Mm-hmm. Let's move to the final game of the weekend. West Coast 2 4 16, just pushed aside by the Brisbane Lions, 8 13 61. What we all expected. Yeah, it was. And uh, like watching the game, um, yes, Brisbane played really well and all that kind of stuff. They came here like, we're, we're going to win. Yeah, it, was, um, it wasn't It was a terribly exciting match to no. watch, was it? it for the fu- footy purist, this was like, you, what you think happened, if you haven't watched it, what you think happened, ex- happened. it happened exactly <laughs> that way. <laughs> Ali Anderson had a bunch of the footy. Sophie Conway was cool. Dak Davidson kicked an awesome goal. Alison Drennan was good again for West Coast. Yeah. Everything that you need, if you just had like six dot points, just tick them all. That's it. Yeah. Brisbane stuffed around with the footy. Tick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They've been doing that a little bit recently, haven't they? Especially yeah. against the lower teams. Yeah. I feel like they have like some sort of little break in concentration and they're like, oh, yeah, yep. No, 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 no. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's like you, it's like you, um the dog with the shot collar. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> stop firing. Oh, that- yeah. Oh, handball. <laughs> yep. Sick. We're back. All right. It's almost that. Um, th- there's not really much to talk about. I know the Lions shared the goal kicking again, which is great. But mm-hmm. importantly, six players with five or more tackles. Mm hmm. Uh, there's, uh, and Brisbane and West Coast fans, yes, you can get annoyed at us. We're sort of skimping over this game, but nothing happened. Yeah. It's like Brisbane again, like. Brisbane on a four day back. was around the ball, tackling pressure, like they're amazing. Ali Anderson, good again. Big surprise. Sophie Conway. Sophie Conway's having a season. Yep. Um, also, so be wearing the long sleeves in Perth, risky. I don't mind it. Mm. It looked hot. Yeah. <laughs> it looked hot. Like it looked warm. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I've seen people with zinc on. Bit of zinc and long sleeve. <laughs> Woo! I was sweating for him. Oh, I forgot to mention Ella Roberts had 24 touches again, like mm. just 10 marks, just yeah. working her backside off. So, yeah, there you are. Tick. Talked about Ella Roberts being awesome. <laughs> Fan bases, Brisbane, like, yeah, we're good. We know it. Bring on the Crows. Yeah. And yeah, West, that's going to be a good one, isn't it? And West Coast are like, still in the eight, guys. Yeah. Sick. Thank you. Yeah. Take that. Anyway, we need to talk about two games coming up because, you know, midweek footy, it doesn't stop. So we move into week five of the AFLW. Just the two games to hit on because uh, we'll talk about Wednesday's game, even though we are doing a show on Wednesday. It's just because there's so much footy we need to talk about. First game, I well, they're both at Icon Park. Tuesday night, Richmond at take on Port Adelaide at 7.15. What are we expecting out of this? Tigers are up and about. Port... <sighs> Having a rough trot. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what what they take out of Friday. I'm actually really excited to watch this game. Yeah. Because Port Port are not terrible. They've got some um, really great players. We know that they can really, like, string things together when they want to. Richmond is not, like, yes, they're winning, but they're not dominating. So I think, you know, Port is a chance. Yeah. 100%. I think it'll be a really good game. Where, where's your lean? We just got early tip because these are just these are the quick previews. Richmond, Ooh. Richmond by twelve. So at least Richmond have had the day's extra rest. They're mm-hmm. at home. Don't know if Port actually stayed over or not. I don't know if they've gone home or come back. You'd hope they've stayed. In Surely they go home. Really? You reckon go home on Saturday morning and then come back this afternoon? Yeah. Okay. People have got kids and stuff. Yeah, I know. But I know that, well, obviously West Coast stayed over. He's five hours. So, mm. yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm leaning towards Richmond. Let now. us know, Port Adelaide, yeah. if you're still around. <laughs> uh, I'm leaning towards Richmond as well. I just mm-hmm. think Conti, Bren- Brennan's in form, like could kick four. Yeah. Because yep. that's what I've noticed, that Port is susceptible to leaking a few goals mm-hmm. when a good team gets on top of them. So mm-hmm. let's go to that. All right, let's move across to – this one looks simple. Carlton host uh, North Melbourne – Carlton really haven't shown us much. These two teams played last year. North Melbourne won by 10 goals. North Melbourne actually lead three to zip over time. That really doesn't sort of shock anyone. You got Carlton coming off a goalless game last week. North Melbourne have looked just inexorable at times this season. And Carlton just, you know, lost to Hawthorne, beat Gold Coast, smashed Geelong, got beaten by Richmond. (laughs) The only one to take out of is the uh, result against Geelong, my, what was that? Yeah, what was that? The rest of them all kind of make sense when I think about it. Yeah. I think North Melbourne will run away with this, absolutely. Yeah, I just don't think inside the midfield, I th- 
I think obviously Keely Sharam and Abby McKay are in for big nights, but it's like Garner and Adele are just going to go, hi. Yeah. Hi, it's us. Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. You're in for a long night. Also, good kit matchup with the navy blue up against the mainly white North Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Had Great. some good kit matchups. Didn't have a terrible one like the Adelaide Hawthorne one. So, yeah, I think yeah, I think they get it done. Obviously, Kate Sheila up forward as well. The Moody's need to get their hands on the footy for Carlton to have a chance, but North Melbourne set up so well defensively. Mm-hmm. North Melbourne by six goals. Oh, a big one. Yeah, big one. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same, I reckon. Yeah. Tipping results from the weekend. Bryony gets a gold star. Tips Yo! nine of 11 from the weekend. Social media says only eight. But on the show, you did tip the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, I did. But at the start of the week, you tipped Collingwood. So Yeah, but I had time to think about it. Yeah, and you thought better of it. I got eight out of 11. Stats guy, six. And Spence got seven. So experts doing the job. Mm-hmm. All right, full credit. Best team of the round or the week. Who was the best team that you saw last week? I'm just going to say, because I got their first win, I'm going to do Western Bulldogs. Okay. Well done, Bulldogs. Proud of you. Hawthorne. It's Hawthorne. Yeah. It's 100% Hawthorne. They're really good to watch, aren't yeah, they? they're yeah. fun. And I hate it because I don't yeah. like Hawthorne that much. You've been successful everywhere you've been. Mm-hmm. Uh, best on ground of the week, it's quite easily. Greta Bodie, you kick six. Yeah, kick well six said. straight. Yeah. Best on. Love Greta Bodie. Um, I'm going out to Mon Conti. Okay, fair. Yeah. Ripper. Yeah. Could have had a few. Like, I could I could have given Laura Gardner a shout as well. Yeah. Getting 30-odd touches in a derby. But yeah. anyway, great weekend of footy. And it just keeps going because it is one o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. Tomorrow night is more footy because what do we love? Footy. There we go. No bad review this week. Got nothing? No. Oh, that's good. This is good. <laughs> this is this is actually growth. Yeah, it is. Well done, everybody in the general public. Okay. Thank you. All those weak-minded men who we thought would be just yelling stuff. Well said. We honestly thought we'd have a lot of these by now. <laughs> well, I'm just waiting for one just to pop up. But this is good mm. because I've I've actually got uh, – so when I was at the this pub on Friday night before going to the SCG, we are watching the footy and a lot of people are like, this has gotten so much better. Like I know yes. that sounds negative, mm. but when you think about where we were when we started this competition to now, I reckon the Western Bulldogs of this year would be amazingly competitive in season one because I reckon the talent level and just the overall skill and ability of the yeah. players has just come up so yeah. much. I like th- this is what growth is called. It yeah. was never going to be in season one the best footy that you've ever seen, no. but we had to get here and look at how much we are improving. Yeah. It's it's amazing and it's a credit to everybody involved in the AFLW. And some people may think that they've rushed expansion, but you have to do it to get all the talent. You got to do it. Unlike the you NRL who it. still isn't at that level yet. Yeah. So, well done, AFL. I'm giving, mm. giving a bit of a tick for once. Well done, AFLW. Good job, team. All right, that'll do AFL today. Well, for today, we'll be back on a Wednesday to preview all of Thursday, all of Friday, all of Sunday. I don't is there, I don't think there's games on Saturday, is there? I haven't, no, no, no. I haven't no, no, looked no. ahead to the schedule. I just no. know there's a lot of footy. Smart idea, keeping clear air for the AFL grand final. That That's one day I'm like, don't put any footy on. Like, Do you want to m- mention Sydney one more time? No. Okay. I don't need to. I'm in the, I'm in the jumper. I'll mention it on Wednesday. <laughs> I'll mention it all throughout the week. Anyway. Do you want to mention that you don't have grand final tickets yet? If anyone's got a grand final ticket that is still watching or listening, please hit me up because I will pay dollars. I will give up custody of the stats guy if that's what I need to do. Wow. A date with stats guy. (laughs) Don't know if the stats lady will like that one anyway, Uh, but I will give up custody of stats guy. You will legally own the stats guy. Okay. That's good. Sell someone. For grand final tickets. <laughs> Sell someone that you don't own. How do you mm. know that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shout out to our new best pal, Becky Webster, for jumping on as well. Thank you to Bryony. Thanks for having me. All right, make sure you get across the YouTube. Give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Please leave a comment. Of course, get around us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, all the social medias, AFLW Today AU. Check out AFL Today. Obviously, a massive week this week with the grand final. Plenty of stuff coming out. Uh, if you're watching this on Monday afternoon, we do have a Brownlow preview show out as well as our wrap of the preliminary finals. Cricket today is going to get rolling again. Football today, those boys are up and about talking all things EPL and what's going on in Australia. We need a new coach for the Socceroos, apparently. NBA Australia about to get up and running because that season starts soon. NFL Australia will be up tomorrow afternoon because it's the end of week three. Of course, hold all tickets for all of your horse racing action. That'll get us done for this this show here on AFLW Today. We'll catch you later on in the week. Look after yourselves and always remember, footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back.